Oh, good lord, I gotta move back up too. He's about to get hit with plasma. I'm shooting down him now. I'm shooting down him now. What fleet is that? He's sending missile. everything at you. Oh! I caught Beast that in first person. I caught that in first person. And there they go. Get in there! Boom, we got a hit. Boom, we got another hit. Oh my good sweet Where's Jesus. that? Once I see freaking lifeboats, then I'll stop shooting. Holding fire. Never mind, that works. <laughs> that works too. Nebula's Fleet Command is best described as a tactical real-time strategy space combat game where you are able to create your own unique fleet to battle against other fleets in PvP battles or against the game's AI. Now many of you have been watching our stream and have come to know this game has, let's say, a huge learning curve. Many of you have actually asked us for advice and what to do best when playing this game and how to get better. The first thing we tell everybody to play through is the tutorials the game has in place. This will allow you to have a base understanding of ship movement and orientation, locking up targets with radars, ordering your guns to fire, and how to fire your missiles. Now us at Leviathan Gaming have some, let's say, unconventional tactics, and we all agree trying to teach everybody tactics in this game would probably not go so well. So we decided to make a series of videos that would explain a lot of different aspects of Nebulous that stemmed outside the game's tutorials. And today we're starting with the base of every fleet, the ships themselves. There are currently two factions in the game, and the first one that we will cover is the Shelter Alliance. We're not going to cover any of the lore between the Shelter Alliance or the Outlying Systems Protectorate. If you want to see more on that, I recommend you check out Parafil Zov's video. Link is in the description. For more details on the lore behind the Shelter Alliance and the Outlying Systems Protector, or also known as OSP. But for now, onto the Alliance ships, starting with the Corvette. The Sprinter class Corvette is, without a doubt, the smallest Alliance military ship, supporting four mount points for cannons, VLS 2 or 3 launchers, and point defense weapons. While it does have the thinnest armor of 5 centimeters, it makes up for that with its speed. With the base FM200 drive, at full speed the Sprinter can go 35 meters per second and at flank speed is able to go 52.5 meters per second. It also has a default modifier of negative 20% flank damage probability, which means you're able to stay at flank speed for a longer time and have lower chance of damaging your thrusters, which means you could really get out there, see what's going on, and then turn around and run back as long as you're running away from the missiles and the guns without getting hit. It gets pretty difficult. These ships are superb at scouting, electronic warfare, and missile defense. Great for having on the outside of your fleets or sending them further ahead to see what's going on and where your enemy is. Next on our list is the Reigns Class Frigate, a solid all-around warship supporting four mount points and a generous amount of internal modules and compartments. With an armor thickness of 15 centimeters, it can still go a moderate speed of 22 meters per second with the FM200 drive. As quoted from in-game, a nice trifecta of utility, speed, and armoring. This ship is able to act as a jack-of-all-trades warship. However, don't expect it to be able to do everything at once. I personally love to use these ships as point defense and electronic warfare ships, so that way at least I have one jammer and another ship covering my rear end from missiles that are about to approach my uh, sides of my heavier ships, like your battleships or your heavy cruisers. However, you're still able to go ahead and throw on the VLS-2 or 3 launchers, so that way you can still send heavy hitting missiles downrange towards your enemies. Next up, we have the Keystone Class Destroyer, a medium weight, specialized warship, and the only warship in the Alliance that supports spinal weapons fixed to the bow, giving the ship a deadly efficiency. With armor thickness of 22 centimeters, and it has a full speed of 20 meters per second with the FM200 drive, it's able to go ahead and get out there, get into a position where it can go ahead and possibly ambush an enemy with the devastating effect of its two spinal weapons. That being the M550 mass driver shooting 300 millimeter Sabo rounds or the Mark 600 beam cannon. I think that kind of goes without saying. You guys have been watching the stream know that we love the beam cannon. 
It's boasting seven mount points. This destroyer is able to carry a healthy array of weapons and has a healthy amount of compartments and modules. Although this thing doesn't move that fast, it's still something to be afraid of on the battlefield. Up next, we have my favorite ship, the Voxel class light cruiser. These ships operate as a bridge between capital ships and lighter class ships. While they don't have as much armor as a heavy cruiser or a battleship, they still move much faster than lighter class ships. With the FM500 drive at full speed, they can get up to 26 meters per second, and at flank speed, they can go as fast as 39 meters per second. This means they can quickly flank your enemies and deliver a lot of firepower and cause a lot of problems for the enemy. With 10 mounting points, and a 2 plus missile programming channels modifier, you're able to send lots of missiles down range and with as many mounts as there is, you could put them all with 250 millimeter gun mounts and turn your guns and broadside anybody that decided to come and mess with your boys. Next on the list, the Axford class heavy cruisers. Heavy cruisers are slow, heavily armored and armed to take on multiple threats at once. With heavy sloped armor and dual class 4 weapon mounts and a class 5 mount for heavy fire support, it is able to deliver heavy firepower when you need it the most and it's very reliable in a pinch. This ship is very slow, so you need to plan out your attacks and your responses to enemy movements in advance. With an armor thickness of 40 centimeters though, you're going to be able to take a lot of hits and then hit the enemy back just as hard. Just keep in mind, if you get this guy out in the middle of nowhere, he will be picked off by everybody very quickly. Have some support ships with him to assist these ships' survivability. Last but certainly not least, the Solomon class battleship. Arguably one of the most terrifying things to see in space. With an armor thickness of 52 centimeters, it will shrug off most things that you throw at it. This ship is very difficult to eliminate. Concentrated and consistent firepower is needed to take this warship down. This ship can house any weapon in the Alliance military to its hull and with 14 mounting points, you can set these ships up however you want with plenty of compartments and modules to spare. This incredible warship will dominate the battle space. If you see a Solomon out there and you don't have one of your own to fight, you better start making plans with your friends to take that thing out because that is going to be a headache to deal with. If you have one, protect it because it is going to be able to deliver those hard hitting shots to the ships that are causing you the biggest problems. And that is it. All of the Shelter Alliance warships and their glorious marvelousness. I don't know if I should do that accent again. I'm going to avoid not to. Anyways, hope this helps out any of you that are new to the game to understand your ships a little bit more with the Shelter Alliance. Don't be afraid to experiment with different weapon setups against the AI in single player or against your friends. Because that's going to be able to tell you what is working and what is not working. Next video is going to be on the Outlying Systems Protectorate and what ships they have at their disposal, including some of the weapons. We won't go too hard into them, but at least we'll knock out the ships. Until next time, everybody, keep your eyes on the scopes, watch out for spikers, and we'll see you out there. Full rail gun system. Hell yeah. Oh my good god, another rail system just went over my gun. Quiet. My gun and PD one. I gotta move. We're taking fire. We are en route, Commander. Waiting orders. What's my main fleet doing? They're still are they still targeting those ships? Yes they are. Hey uh Sebastian, you have a plasma fleet directly above you. Oh yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I just I just realized